Hi everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet. This is Taz, and are you ready for another wig closet takeover? I am. Let's do one for Noriko today. Um, I have quite a few Noriko wigs, and um, I, they're all in their boxes right now just because I've been wearing some shorter styles and some exploring some different things. So I'm going to bring out some old favorites of mine and then also some new favorites. Uh, when Heather at Sister Wigs opened up her new uh, clearance store called wigcloseouts.com, I took advantage of some of the Dolce's. Um, so I bought a few of those in a couple different colors. So I want to show you a couple different colors and, and just a few styles from Noriko. So what I'm wearing now, you've probably guessed, uh, Jackson. You're right. <laughs> so this is Jackson, and this Jackson is in a Strawberry Swirl. So I thought we could take a look at this color first. So Strawberry Swirl is very, very pretty color. Um, the Noriko colors all seem to be very dynamic with multiple colors and it just gives a really nice soft effect um, how they blend their colors. It's just so realistic. And also I think that the Noriko fibers are exceptional. I think they're um, kind of a medium density, very silky. They, they're durable fibers. I sense that uh, they go for the long haul, so you can get a lot of wear out of your Noriko wigs. I also feel the same way about the Noriko caps. Um, most Noriko caps are just a standard cap where you have a closed rose lace top with a lot of permatease, classic permatease bump, and then your open uh, sides and back. And uh, that's probably the most sturdy construction you're going to find in a wig, is that standard cap. And so I think that the Noriko wigs are just built uh, from quality and they're meant to last. And the nicest thing about Noriko, I think, is they're very affordable, um, especially since they don't typically have a lot of fancy cap features like monofilament and lace. Uh, they're keeping the price point down, but giving you some beautiful colors and styles. So let's examine Jackson. Uh, there's a lot of wig reviews out there on Jackson, so I didn't want to review it by itself. But in combination with some other Noriko styles that we can take a look at a color comparison, I think this will be neat to look at. Um, so back to the color on Jackson. This is Strawberry Swirl. And it's a combination of some medium auburn, with some platinum and it's very well blended and then on top of that blend you do have some chunkier platinum highlights I love this color because it gives me a nice mix of some warmer auburns uh, peers on the light side just because it's so well blended with that platinum and then the chunkier platinum highlights just gives me uh, a, a cooler effect than if it were all um, if it were all auburn or light auburn. So beautiful. This is called the, uh, the Jennifer Aniston style. I think she wore this style for many years. If anybody remem remembers Friends and, and her evolution in hairstyles, this is kind of one I think she landed on after Friends. It's so, so cute. And like I said, a lot of permatease there, but that's going to give you the structure that you need to do a lot of different styling. Um, so like I said, you have seen a lot of videos out there on this. One thing that drove me crazy about Jackson, and I dearly love the sides on Jackson, I think this whole profile is just adorable. But keeping the bangs out of your face, you know, how do you do that? Um, this is a fairly new style. Like I said, I got this one from uh, Heather's new closeout store, wig clearance store. So I had to work with it a bit. And I think that Jackson is really very trainable. So how to keep those bangs out of your face. So what I like to do, and I've seen this uh, on YouTube before, and it, and it really is a nice technique, and it does work if you're patient. So this isn't a heat-friendly wig, so I wouldn't recommend taking heat appliance to it. Um, but what I like to do is just give it a nice twist, a pretty thick twist here. All right, and then take your wig safe brush or comb or fingers and just kind of cinch and pinch. And that gives it a bit of, uh, it gives it a bit of texture plus the heat from your hand. 
will help it along. And I really feel like the, the root is the answer to training your wig. Because if you can train the root to go a certain way, the fibers are going to follow. So I like to get in at the root, use the heat from my hand, do some twisting and some manipulating at the root area. And then you could, you could back comb or walk it, you know, pinch and walk it up if you wanted to. But if you do that a few times, and every time you wear it, just continually put it back into place, it's eventually going to stay there for you. Just a little bit of working with it here, I can already tell it's going to train nicely. And, and um, I've had that experience with Jackson before. Um, so again, the same thing on this side. So as you move along, just grab more hair, just keep twisting. And again, grab a, a wig safe brush or comb or use your fingers and just pinch and cinch it up there. And then just keep working with it. Um, I think it's adorable and these bangs are going to stay for me. So this would now become a wig that I could wear every day even to the office because I've, I've created this contour um, that keeps them out of the face. And I also love, I think it's so cute when you can take like a braid, just braid the, bit, the side bang a little bit and, and pin it. So adorable. So that's how I style my Jackson. Now I've done, a, I've done, I've had Jacksons before and I've done some ponies, I've done some updos, it all looks fantastic. Um, the cut is just so classic and beautiful. So now what I'd like to do though is to compare the colors. So this is the Strawberry Swirl. I think it's Swirl. They all bleed together for me now. It is. It's Strawberry Swirl. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking Frost. I'm like, is it Frost or is it Swirl? Um, I've had wig on the brain today, so I've been looking at some styles and colors. Um, Tony of Beverly has a really neat strawberry frost color, and I think that's what I was thinking of. So this is Strawberry Swirl by Noriko. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is my Robin by Noriko, a beautiful long style. Um, and this one is in Nutmeg F. So I'd like to compare that for a moment. So Nutmeg F is described as being the lightest of auburn, and then these champagne highlights running through it just really lighten and brighten it up. So I think you can see that it's a little more gold in appearance, a little more, bit more warmer, I think, next to the strawberry swirl. So uh, the strawberry swirl also has a, a, an auburn base to it. But that platinum that the strawberry swirl has in it really, really neutralizes that color, don't you think? So the champagne uh, highlights in the, uh, in the Nutmeg Frost or Nutmeg F um, lighten and brighten this color, but it still reads a little bit warm to me, which I love. And I think there's even more of the champagne highlights right around the face on this color, and I'll put her on here and show you in a minute. Um, but it's just so attractive. And I'm not looking at this as a gold or, you know, terribly auburn. It's just such a beautiful blend, just like this strawberry swirl is. But if you're looking at both colors and making a decision, then um, this would tell you that, that that nutmeg really is a bit warmer in tone, in overall tone and read, um, than the strawberry frost. I also have a Nutmeg uh, R to show you. So the Nutmeg R is actually going to be um, that same base color as the Nutmeg F, but there's going to be, I think in the Nutmeg F there's just a little bit more highlighting, especially around the face, um, giving it a frosted look than more of a blended look. So we'll, we'll do a comparison after this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put Robin on. I'll be right back.
All right, so I am back, and this is Robin. I dearly love this style. I got it last year, and um, I wore it a few times there in in the winter time. But then when summer and spring and summer came, then I got onto my little pixie kick there, and this has been in the box ever since. So I've only worn her a few times, but each time I just absolutely think she's gorgeous. And I did a full review on this if you're interested in looking that up in the library of videos that I have. Um, just a perfect cool weather wig too. So with cold weather just around the corner, this makes very nice wig scarf. Keeps your neck warm. Uh, the density on this style is very realistic. And I say that in comparison to uh, another Noriko style called Angelica. Angelica has a lot more volume and a lot more body and a lot more permatease. Um, there is some permatease here on Robin. Not very much though, as you would expect from a Noriko wig. Um, it's just more form fitting. Even the silhouette is just a little more closely profile than Angelica. Isn't it gorgeous? And I love to take these sides back, braid or twist them. And these bangs are just so practical. And in my review of Robin, I really feel like Robin is an amazing value. If you look at the price points um, on this wig, it's just incredible, um, an incredible value because you get all this hair, this lovely texture, a unique design. Um, it is, it is a standard cap, just like the other Noriko wigs that I just showed you there. So it's a, a standard cap with some permatees here, um, but very little permatees on the sides and back. Very little. I think that makes it unique in the uh, family of Noriko wigs. So I'll go ahead and do a spin for you. And again, this is Nutmeg F. Nutmeg F. Isn't this an awesome little fall wig? I can just see going to the football games here with a bit of a sweater and having my hair keep me warm when the nights get cool. All right, so this is the adorable Robin. Just love those bangs. They just curve so nicely, right? Just so practically, and they blend back into the main body of the style. It's just gorgeous, beautiful profile. All right, so what we want to do next is I want to compare this to the Nutmeg R that I have, and that's on one of my uh, Noriko Dolce styles. So let me grab that. All right, so this is Noriko Dolce in Nutmeg R. So this would be rooted. Now, this is also rooted. The Nutmeg F is also rooted. This is considered one of the gradient colors, and I think there's actually a a premium, I think these are premium priced with these gradient colors. Just a beautiful blend of root and dynamic color. So this is the F, and I think what you'll notice here is, sorry, this is the R. I'm moving too quickly. So this is the Nutmeg F, this is the Nutmeg R on my Dolce, and you can already see where I think that that base auburn shade that these both share this light auburn is more apparent um, in the Nutmeg R. So the, uh, the champagne highlights that are in the Nutmeg R, you can see them. I don't think they're as well blended, and I don't think there, um, there are as many uh, as there are here in the F. So I think that the Nutmeg R is definitely reading more of that light auburn. Very warm in color and shade. Although on both of these, the, the champagne uh, highlights, platinum highlights, they just really neutralize it. So let's go ahead and I'll back up here so you can see. R and F.
and the rooting is, I would say, about the same, just a medium to dark brown root there. Okay, so here's Robin. I'm going to say goodbye to her. I'm going to probably keep her out and wear her here in the upcoming weeks. Um, a lot of styling options with Robin. Beautiful hair, wonderful density. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put on this Dolce in Nutmeg R, and then we're going to do some comparisons to some other colors in this very same style. So I'm back. I am wearing my Dolce in the Nutmeg R. Just a cute style. I have owned a lot of Dolce's, probably four or five, and each one of them is cut slightly different. Um, never know what you're going to get. I don't know if I like that or not because you like them, you like it one way, and then the next one you get could be a little bit different. But you know that's true with most wigs and styles. I think so. Dolce has a ton of permatease. It's a really cute. Uh, has a really cute bevel back to it, multiple layers, and I think just perfect for fall. I think it looks so cute in some of those sweaters and things. Again, just your classic standard Noriko cap. And this is the, again, the Nutmeg R. So I thought it would be fun to go ahead and walk you through my Dolce's um, so that you can see them one at a time and just kind of take note of the differences. I love how these fibers move. Again, just those, that medium density, silky type fiber is so beautiful. There's a lot of permatease, so you're going to have to get used to that. This actually made my top five all-time favorite wigs last year for 2016. I can't guarantee it'll be on the list this year. I've explored so many new beautiful styles, but it's still just a classic for me, and I do love it. All right, so let me go ahead and introduce you to the next um, Dolce that I have. All right, so this one's just right out of the box. Lots and lots of volume, as you can tell here. Um, more volume than the uh, Nutmeg R that I just showed you. So this one might take a while just to calm down a little bit, but I've owned enough Dolce's in my life to know that it will happen, that it will become very wearable. So if, I'm if I am craving a lot of poof and volume, and this is one I would go to as opposed to um, maybe this Nutmeg R. So this is Spring Honey. Uh, first time I've owned Spring Honey. It's a medium blonde with some uh, French vanilla and gold, pale gold highlighting going through it. It's a fairly neutral blonde. Um, to me, it just isn't as dynamic as some of the highlighted colors that are offered with Noriko. Um, there are highlights in here, but uh, the, the more chunkier, dramatic highlights is what I'm referring to that I love so much. So this color is kind of boring next to some of these other colors. Again, Spring Honey R. Or no, this is just Spring Honey, sorry. There is no R in this one. All right, so I'm going to set aside the Nutmeg R for a moment because I want to show you um, the one that I've gotten the most wear out of. And I absolutely adore the color. This is Sugarcane R. Love this color. Something about how uh, this just lights up with my skin tone. I just absolutely love it. All right, so this one is my favorite. It's a little, little shaggier and contoured, curled up on the sides. It just lays a little better. And then the back, notice how the back is cut a little longer. If anybody's ever seen the Sonoma um, by uh, Rene of Paris, it's got those really long layers in the back on a, on a beveled nape. So this one just isn't, doesn't quite lay the same. 
Now these colors, the spring honey is actually the base color for the uh, sugarcane R. Um, so the sugarcane R is uh, the, the spring honey with some French vanilla and uh, very, very light rust low lights, giving it a nice, almost strawberry effect. Beautiful. So again, two very different looking dolces, don't you agree? I prefer a rooted color on dolce just because there is so much permatease there. And the way these fibers are, are um, sewn in on the style, the, the overall style, there's a lot of lift, as you can tell here. And so what that does, it creates a very wide space and it's very hard to zigzag that part because it's just all little poofy up there. And there are things you can do. There's a lot of different hacks and things like that that you could try. I just, I tend to want to work with my wigs the way they are. And if I, if I do have to hack, you know, do a hack on them, that's fine. But um, I try to mess with the part and do everything I can before I take out my scissors and my goops. All right. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to put back my Dolce in Sugarcane R, and I'm going to pull out my Dolce in Mochaccino R. So here's Dolce in Mochaccino R, and this color is described as being a light golden brown with some sandy blonde highlighting to it. Um, I, I really love this color. Just those highlights just pop, don't they? and then it has the darker root, like a dark brown root. So yet again, another different Dolce. I got these all at the same time on the clearance site, and they all pretty much look a little different. Um, but this is the Spring Honey next to the Mochaccino R. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on Mochaccino R uh, real quick and then I want to show you just uh, how different this one looks and what we can do with Dolce to style. So I'm back and this is the Mochaccino R. So again, just maybe a little shorter layers here. Um, there's a big uh, curl, an inward curl that wasn't so obvious in the others. I'm glad that it's rooted. It's uh, There's a lot of permatease here. So cute, just love it. But it seems to be a little bit shorter. And even in the back, there aren't those uh, shaggy pieces off of, the, uh, off of the crown that I love so much that used to be somewhat of a hallmark of this style. It just isn't, just isn't real obvious on this particular one. here so you know you just got to go with the flow and the flow is in um, so if you can work with that I think you can achieve some some looks in a natural way instead of kind of going against the grain on a style you kind of want to work with the grain so if you can just bring that in a little bit fluff it up there where that natural curve is taking place I think you can achieve something really cute. So I've got all these colors. Each one looks slightly different. I guess it's a good thing, you know, we're not all the same. And uh, when you go out, you can choose which one works best with your outfit uh, or the occasion. So here I just kind of scoop them in as what they naturally wanted to do. Another thing that I love about Dolce is that these bangs, even though they're probably six to seven inches, they um, they really don't flap in the face. I, you know, they uh, there's a little bit of a natural curve to them, and then they move back. So even though I'm kind of fiddling here with the sides, it doesn't send those bangs flying in the face, which I love. 
Another thing we can do with the curvature here, I think, is just to uh, do a little bit of an ear tuck because they're naturally scooping around anyway. So that's something I think we can do and make it look really cute. So, you know, if you get your Dolce, you think it's a cute, cute style, then you get it home and there's just all this poof. What do you do with that? You know, I, I, you, you have to, you, you put it on and you're thinking, do I want to keep this or not? Um, one thing you can do is use clips. I'm just a huge clips fan. So just to remove some of the volume from the sides, I think you could take it back into a clip and just generally work those fibers and pull them back just behind the ear and use a clip or just behind and above the ear. I think that's probably more. It's a little bit cuter and then I'll do the same for the other side. Um, so there's these big thick sides, lots of permatease. You want to love it. Just not sure how that's going to work. So here is an option for you. Just take those sides back and clip them up just above the ear. So this is the cute Dolce. Either you love it or you don't. <laughs> That's what I've noticed anyway. So I really love Dolce, as you can tell. I like to have them. These are This is an everyday wig for me. Um, there was a time I, I was working so many hours, and this has been a year or so ago, well, probably a year and a half to two, um, when I was working for the bank, and I was working every day of the week. Um, couldn't catch a break. I had uh, children and, and events and things like that. I just didn't find the time to, couldn't find the time to do anything. So the last thing I wanted to do was fiddle around with my hair. So after I found wigs, this was quickly one of my favorites because it was so easy to wear, easy to shake and go. Um, I would literally get up in the morning about four o'clock and um, if I had grocery shopping to do, I would go do that grocery shopping, come home and then shower and get ready for work and things like that. And so this is my grocery store wig too. I just love it. I love it just to run out. It always looks fashionable. It looks like I spent a ton of time uh, getting it, getting this hair to have all this body and style, when in reality it was just a shape and a put on. I didn't have to fiddle with lace fronts. I didn't have to really care if it was on even. Uh, now the Rico caps do fit a bit petite. I think that that's common knowledge. Um, they fit me perfectly and there's a little bit of adjustment but if you're over 22 inches it just may be a little bit tight for you it will loosen up some as you wear it um, but uh, if you're prone to getting headaches and things for for the tension i probably wouldn't take a chance on a Noriko wig all right so let's take a look at the next style that i want to show you and uh, this one i've actually did i review it i think i did this is May. Yes, I did review May. I reviewed May in Marble Brown, and I no longer have that May, but I do have the one here in the Sugarcane R, which I liked a little better with in terms of color. Um, so this is May in Sugarcane R. Another beautiful wig, very thoughtfully styled. Um, it has these nice razor sides and this uh, beautiful sweeping bang. It all rem the bang part does remind me a little bit of Jackson, that you'll see. Um, but it just blends so nicely back into the main body of the wig. And then it's just so practical, this length here with these kind of razor, razored ends. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and put on May. I'll be right back. So here's May and Sugarcane R. I just love this. Isn't it adorable? These uh, forward sweeping sides that are so nice and finely razored. And then the, the bangs that, again, I've trained these a little bit, just like I was showing you on Jackson, so I like them to kind of curve and curl away from the face. There's so much you can do. These wigs are such great value. 
and because they're a standard cap, if you want to put in a full bang, if you want to just create some uh, shorter fringe, you could absolutely do that. Um, I love the permatease here too on May. Just enough there to give you a nice bump and profile and keep that style lifted and light and feathery all day long. So when you're setting a standard cap like this, you just want to go slightly above your own hairline. So if you don't have any hair, I think the measurement is uh, like three or four fingers, maybe three fingers, four fingers, and just above that. And then if you do have hair, then you can just go right above your hairline. That will give you the most natural look. Um, it's amazing to see that if you're wearing your wig too low, I mean, everybody understands the dangers of wearing it too high, right? Because then your own wig lines or your own hairline is exposed. But the dangers of wearing a wig too low on your forehead, it just looks odd, even by a slight amount. So I'm just slightly going to shift this down as if I didn't really take a look at myself before I went out. And you can see it just looks unnatural. Um, with that shorter forehead. But if you just move it slightly above your own, and I can always tell because I've got that widow's peak, so right about there, perfection. It just looks so natural. Um, now, a lot of you out there that have bio hair and you have nice bangs, um, or some bangs, I don't have any bangs, I've got a widow's peak and then it just a receding hairline, so I've never had bangs, so I don't have the hair nor this texture that would allow me to pull out my own bio hair here at the sides. But so many of you have had great results just getting in there and kind of pulling out that bio hair, just lending this a bit more realism. So if the wind comes, you're not seeing, I mean, those wig lines are just completely obscured and natural looking because you can use some of your own hair. And that's the beauty of not having a lace front uh, or a mono top. You can, you can use your own hair to accent, to accent that style. All right, so this is the beautiful May. And um, you know what, I, have to, I do have one more to show you. Um, I may have some other Noriko wigs. I've got a couple different places where I store them and so there may be some up there. Um, but this is just a sampling of my collection, so I'm going to end it on a good note with Ivy by Noriko. Be right back. This is Ivy. Isn't she just so chic and stylable? I mean, it's a short, a short shaggy cut, but there's so much you can do with Ivy. So, I mean, you can move those fibers forward. You can do so much with just the the little bit of hair that you have here and, and it's got a nice bang contour here. Um, by the way, this is in Champagne R. Well, I've seen that color before. Um, another thing with Ivy is that you can really get in there and use some uh, contour cream or styling paste, whatever you want to call it, to bring out some of this texture. My preferred way of wearing uh, uh, Ivy is just to kind of pull Pull that fringe in flush to the head, kind of fluff, fluff that bang area just a bit and then just work this texture up in the back. And the permatease is going to help you out here. This is uh, no exception to the permatease rule when it comes to Noriko. Um, all the usual suspected places for the permatease, but this wig is just such a cute everyday wig. Looks great with... Um, I was going to say it looks great with scarves and hats. I wore this last winter, um, took it on vacation with me, and I had uh, a lot of uh, scarves and hats on, and just adorable. So it's just supremely layered, and it really is kind of a one-of-a-kind. About the only style that I can think of that would be close to Ivy just right off the top of my head, uh, one that I have seen before, and that is uh, the uh, Ellen Villa Sky. 
has all these little choppy neat layers with a, a bang. Now Sky is more asymmetrical. This is perfectly symmetrical on both sides. So just love it. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my Noriko collection with a neat color comparison of a sampling of Noriko colors. I hope everybody has a great day. We'll see you next time on Tassis Week Classic.